Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Try Particle Fleet Emergence. Particle Fleet is the latest game from Knucklecracker, the same company that brought us the uh, Creeper World Trilogy. A set of games that I enjoy very, very much. I find them very addictive, very entertaining, very great challenge with a lot of replayability as you seek to better your time on the various established maps, as well as Particle Fleet here brings not just two campaigns but a, and, and a randomly generated mission system, but also also a built-in mission editor as well as a mission exchange system which is really great and uh, promises a lot of replayability. We'll talk about the ship editor later on over here. So what's the deal with these games? Well all of the games from Knucklecracker feed, uh, er, deal with like a lot of bullets, a lot of particles, and a lot of sort of stuff to push back. It's a real-time strategy game that is, I don't know, it's really hard to describe. There's not another game like it. The Creeper World series, I really, really, really enjoy. And Particle Fleet uh, changes that formula a lot. If you do go and check those other videos on my channel, that's more about base building and sort of pushing forward and expanding. Whereas Particle Fleet involves, well, spaceships and involves a lot of movement and fluidity as opposed to base building. So I'm going to go ahead and launch. This is mission number, what was it, eight of the um, of the main campaign here. And I'm just going to skip the story, the story things. Again, the story, the story's not brilliant uh, at all, but it's there and it adds a little bit of structure and that's fine. So we're going to come about halfway through the campaign over here, and this is the map that we're going to be dealing with. Oh, this won't show off the research. Ooh, hold on. Let me go and change my mind and maybe go to like a mission 10 or something. Then we should have the full research unlocked. Yeah, let's go and give this a try and see if this is a, um, a better mission to highlight. No, we still don't have the tech. Ah, but we'll unlock it over here. Okay, you know what? This is probably fine. All right, so this is the map we're going to be playing on. And let's talk about some of the structures. These sort of, I don't know, black hole-ish radiating kind of thing. These are energy sources, and you can build mines on top of them. These things over here are energy pods. They're just a one-shot sort of energy infusion. We've got some amp gems here. That's what these crystals are here. They can be used to unlock some research. Um, this is... Uh, basically a story research unlocky kind of object this one here and this one here for example um, there is some terrain the uh, this game is played in uh, the remnants of broken worlds basically so there's a lot of sort of floating terrain all over the place and ultimately our mission will be to go in here and defeat the particles um, or the creeper or whatever you want to call it in this particular game I suppose so this is going to start off all negative, but both sides are going to be pushing forward. So the first thing we have to do is we have to bring forward our corporate headquarters. This is our primary ship. If it gets destroyed, then actually in the campaign at the very least, it just goes away for a while and then comes back. But you really don't want to lose it. You can see our ship has a variety of firing arcs uh, presenting itself. We've got the inner red. I believe those are very short range lasers um, all the way to the outermost. I think those are particle cannons. Um, or, can or sorry, just cannons or missiles, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to go and start us off over here. One of the things that our ship has, oh yeah, that middle one is our lathe range, our lathe range, and use that to construct and deconstruct certain things. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause, and our ship's going to warp in over here, and its lathe is going to start working on the um, on this energy mine right away. Now, what's quite notable as we zoom into the ship is everything on here serves a role. There is a ship editor built into this game where you can go and duplicate all of this stuff. So we've got some engines in the back, we've got reactors here, which is quite notable because our corporate HQ is uh, by default our only ship here in the story campaign, the ships that we unlock in the story, is the only one with the reactors on it, which means it generates its own power. Otherwise, everything else has got to be within range of a power generator. We've got our bridge, these are our three laser pods, this is our lathe, and these are the extra, I'm going to say cannons, I'm not 100% sure, I'm pretty sure that's what it is though. So what's going to happen here, it's going to build this energy mine and then having done that, if I zoom out, we can see the area that is within range of this energy mine. So it's going to send energy to those various, any ship within that. It will include sending a little bit of extra energy towards our, um, our capital ship here, our corporate HQ. But what's most important is that we can also use this to construct uh, more ships. So we've got our energy production over here, which currently is going to be five per second, which is what we're getting from this mine. You can see the number five over there. You can also store things. Now, first it's going to attempt to recharge our ship. Then it should actually start storing because if it's not constructing anything, that should be fine. And in fact, once we unlock this, um, 
this energy pod, you can see there's a storage over here in yellow as well. So we have lots of stuff stored. Each one of these mines can only sort of utilize a certain amount of energy so fast. You can't necessarily always dump it instantly, but it should be pretty okay. So I'm going to leave our headquarters to go and hook up the ener other energy pods, and I'm going to bring in a lathe ship over here. So again, you can see the radius. The red one is the laser beam that is on the ship. So it can fight a little bit, but that's not really its purpose. Its main purpose is the fact that it's got a lathe, which you use to... Um, hook up things. So I'm going to go and get it building over there and you're going to see the energy mind is going to go and start transferring energy to this lathe ship. Now, because there's a sort of a maximum rate at which it can send all this stuff, um, what you don't want to do is build too many things simultaneously or it spreads the energy around and it doesn't do a very good job of, you know, sort of focusing. You really want to focus your builds as much as possible. So um, there's going to be that. Now, the other thing we've got are these Omnis, they call them. They're basically... <sighs> They're not mines. These are the energy mines, but the Omnis almost feel like mines. What you do is you drop them somewhere. Like, I'm going to drop them over here. And this will get built at the same time, so this is going to split its energy per second um, that it can utilize between these two over here. You're going to see we're going to be out of energy that's stored, but it is going to make use of the crystals. So we do have some more crystals over here, but we've got lots of energy stored, more than we can use uh, like as a very quickly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to move my headquarters to over here and it's going to go and activate another one of these amp gems. So these amp gems right now at this phase in the campaign, all I can do is click on one of my vessels here and rather than move it is I can say mount amp gen. And what that does is increases the fire, the range and fire rate of the ship. It's actually quite handy to do with your headquarters because it also increases the range of the lathe, which could allow you to grab things a few, a little bit easier. But for now, this is going to be sufficient. So, um, you'll notice, actually, the rest of the map, things are happening over here. All the red particles, these are enemy bits that uh, are very, very, very unfriendly. So, this, um, this Omni is going to start spreading, like, blue creep, basically. Blue particles all over the terrain over here. The more terrain it covers, that actually passively generates a little bit more energy. You can see, rather than generating 5 energy per second right now, it's 5.7, 5.8. The more this blue stuff covers terrain, the more passive energy we will gain, which is great. In addition to that, it's actually got its own lathe gun on it. So it's going to go and collect whatever this is. It's actually a ship pickup. It's going to unlock a new design of ship for us, which is going to be very, very handy. Now, so we're going to take advantage of that, and I'm going to drop another Omni over here. In fact, I'm going to build two of them over here, and you can move these. Even though they're ground-based uh, buildings, you can move them. Although, look, I am spreading around my uh, my energy production a fair bit over here, which is not necessarily ideal. did pick up the other Amp Gem, which is great, and I could equip this on these lathes, but I'm going to be saving them. Well, you can unequip them whenever you want. There's actually a cooldown period. If I equip a Mount Gem and then release it over here, it takes 15 seconds to unmount it. So it's not like you've locked them in. So there we go, we just collected a blueprint for a tanker type ship. Now, I already had the micro tanker uh, right over here, but now we've unlocked a full tanker. And the tanker does sort of what you expect. It has large battery stores, so it can hold a lot of, um, a lot of juice. It can also distribute that power to other nearby vessels. And it's actually got some drones on it, which it can send back. If it's out of range, it can send the drone to an energy source to collect energy and return it. So you can use the tankers to fuel your fleet if you're outside of the energy radius over here. So we'll go ahead and unpause again. These guys are being built, which is great. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab one and I'm going to drop them right over here. Because what I want to do is I want to get them to within range of this info pickup, which is probably going to be a story-based thing. Actually, the one that's really going to be important is this one over here, which is going to unlock the ability for us to do some research. Actually, I'm going to get those guys moving over there. So now they're full of energy, which actually worked, the timing worked out nicely. I'm going to put down a new Omni over here to um, keep... Uh, just omniing up this terrain over here. It's actually called mire. You're miring the ground. Now, the red stuff can also mire the ground, and the red stuff will spawn these critters. They're called emergence out of the red ground, which are quite bad and annoying. Uh, you, we actually will be able to unlock something to do that ourselves here in a moment. So I'm actually going to move my omni generator to high ground. I think the omni will climb up very slowly, although there may be a limit, but it is better to put it in high ground. It's going to be within range of a power radius, so that seems to be pretty good for us. Um, so you'll note, actually, I could have moved, and you know what, maybe I'll do that. I'm going to move my HQ over here. I'll be able to reach this thing. 
I can't actually pass through this terrain. Of course, it is space. I can't stop where there's rock, but you can pass over it because, I don't know, you're flying over it or whatever. Um, you know, it's a game. It's got to it's gotta abstractify some things. Don't, don't worry about it too, too much. So I'll drop that there. That's going to try to hook up this. It'll also use the lathe to fix up um, this kind of terrain. They call this struct um, there. We have some and the enemy may have some. Here's some enemy struct over here. And in fact, I can turn on a tick box to highlight. This is all the place this, the enemy struct will appear. It'll start to grow out of this stuff and eventually build up. So it can cause some problems for me. I'm going to go and, and leave that off to simplify things. But here you can see a great example of the struct being constructed over here. And we're going to have to burn our way through there. Now, I'm not saying that my current build is particular optimal or anything like that in any way whatsoever. I'm just sort of playing as is. Okay, so that was just an omni license. It must be must be the info pickup that's going to unlock some tech for us. Um, and it looks like right now it's busy laving that stuff. Can I move you to be over there and maybe encourage you to do that? I'm going to go ahead and build a few more Omnis over here. Um, right now in the current mission, I have a limit of nine. I had eight, but I just unlocked one. Um, getting a bunch of those spammed out is actually going to be quite handy. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a tanker um, over here. The tanker will draw energy from this. It will distribute it, including to these, um, to these Omnis. But more importantly... I better go over here actually to defend this thing. More importantly, if I do unlock this tech, which I'm gonna have to do with my capital ship, um, which has its amp, that's good. We are going to um, we're gonna be able to do some much much better stuff. I actually should have rushed there. I didn't remember which one of the little pods was the one that was really really important. Yeah, see, oh you, oh you can't do this one probably because it's covered in crap. So we need our Omni to push that back. Now the problem is this guy will eventually run out of power over here. I think what I'll do is plan on building a micro tanker over here to cover him. Or I might be thinking there might be another pod somewhere else to unlock our research, which is what I'm looking for. All right, so that's going to get going. I'll, I'll get these these going on. It'll be fine. I'm not, again, not really an optimized build order, but it'll be okay. And actually, if this one's full of power, I'm going to go and move it there because we're now producing 16 energy per turn, which is great. We're still spending more than we're accumulating because we're building, but that's okay. And you can see this guy's going to power that, which is great. And the mini one should power this one as well. And if it keeps gooping this stuff up, we're actually going to be quite happy. So we're going to have to build some more military ships to be able to push out over here. We've got a few. The destroyers are very simple. It's just got the, uh, I think, twin cannons over here. Relatively good range on those. So we'll go and get that started up. I do have to be a little bit worried about my overspending, especially we've actually just used all of our energy pods now. So the only energy we've got is what we produce. So I really should slow things down a wee bit. This is being energized well over here. Now you can see this, um, the Red Mire spawned one of those emergents. These are the little things that go around in the grid. And that the, uh, the alert I got is whenever your corporate headquarters gets attacked, you get that alert. There we go. Now that I've got rid of the Mire here, we can go and unlock this. And this is going to make our life a hell of a lot better. Give okay, us something good to do with our amp gems too. I'm going to go and move one of my lathe ships up here. Actually, I guess I've only got the one. So I'm going to go right ahead and start building another one right away. There we are. Okay, so we get some story elements there, but the big thing that happens with that in the campaign is we unlock the tech screen over here. So you can socket in those amp gems now with one of these 10 technologies. And again, you can socket them and unsocket them if you want. There's a little helper to give some information. So this, for example, will increase the amount of energy that a mine produces, which is pretty handy. Uh, it, I believe it doubles it. It does take a while to build up to 100% efficiency, so you can't just toggle the gems on and off willy-nilly. You won't really get the effect. But, you know, I'm going to get... So I'd get five more energy out of this, but that's not that... Uh, it's pretty good but it's not the most critical. What I really like are the Omni Reactors. This actually makes all the Omnis be self-sustaining. Self so you can put them outside of range of an energy field like this, which is quite good. I also like to give them Omni Cannons as well. The other thing that's handy is, um, well, they're all handy. That's the thing. Uh, Benign Emergent will make us have blue of these little emergents here come out of our goop area, which is pretty handy. We can increase the energy range, so that's radius of our energy fields. We can increase that. We can give our mines over here cannons. We can do all kinds of different stuff. We can increase the production of our land, for example, which is also quite good. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and increase the energy range, which is good. Now, this efficiency, again, will grow over time. The other thing I might, I think I'm going to do is put in some defense defensive struck in here, um, which will build defensive structures around our energy pods over here over time. So we'll get that started. 
And yeah, so these generate their own power, which is great because they don't have to be charged as much, and they operate better outside of friendly territory, which is really, really handy dandy. We're going to build the second lathe ship over here. We've got the destroyer. We're probably going to make a move to this energy pod next. And you can see the borders are growing here as the efficiency continues to increase, which is nice. Also, and actually, I'm going to come over here and unlock another amp gem. Uh, in fact, what I think I'm going to do is box select all my ships and move them all over something like this. Except for this one who's still constructed, I'll leave him there. You can still move the ships as they're being constructed. It just doesn't have all of its systems. The ships can turn, can uh, slide over in a bunch of different ways, but you gen generally when they're moving far distances, they will turn to use their engines effectively. The other thing you can do is you can actually rotate with your mouse wheel and choose the orientation of the ships when they arrive somewhere. So you have a lot of control. There we go. We're going to unlock this amp gem. We're trying to fight back the enemy struct over here, but it's actually quite dangerous. Now, over here, I would love to move a mine over here to take this territory. But two things. One, it's mired by enemy goop, uh, which does damage to anything on it. So there's a good chance if I dropped a mine on there, it would take damage. The other thing is passing through the struct deals damage. So we're going to need to clear a little bit of this up before we go and send our mines over there. You can see the enemy struct or the enemy emergent is still causing a little bit of a problem. Oh, but I did put cannons on my uh, guns here. So, or, so they will go and defend that, which is quite nice. Um, I think I'm going to leave these here for now. I'm just going to scooch them a bit farther forward since they do have their own reactors, which is quite nice. And I'm going to do that. Over here, I'm, I'm assuming all this land has been 100% mired. So I'm going to go and grab all these guys. And I'm just going to move them up here for now. But I'll be ready to move them forward as a group. The other thing you'll notice is all this blue stuff all over. We have blue particles as well as the enemy particles over here. They will goop whatever they touch. They can also do a fair bit of damage. One of the cool vessels that you can have is the grabber over here. And the grabber doesn't have any weapons um, himself, but if you put him, if um, any of your blue particles that come nearby, the grabber will capture and send in the forward direction. That's what that line is. So if I say put a grabber right here, actually, um, now it will touch ground. Okay, we're going to start with the grabber going, say, this way, which will help defeat this. And then what I can do is put a second grabber uh, somewhere over here. The nice thing about the grabber is they really don't need much energy to operate. I don't know if they have their own reactors. I didn't think so. Right, and we have two tankers over here, so we actually have a lot of self-sustaining energy. And my capital ship doesn't really need much of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my fleet and just bring it over here. We're going to have to clear out some of the struct. But that should be relatively easy. Oh, this map has stunners, right. So they have these stun cannons that will go out and fire, you know, only every couple of minutes or so, but they will disable whatever they hit. So we need to get some dischargers over here. They are what you use to counter that effect. Very, very, very frustrating, actually. Yeah, we actually lost our micro tanker here because some of our ships are disabled and we're not able to shut this down. Um, I think I'm going to go and pull back just a little bit. So this build order was, you know, pretty... You know, pretty lightweight um, and kind of slow. So yeah, we're definitely taking some damage. I'm going to set an emergent rally point for us. I think I'm just going to tell it to move forward over here. So all my um, all my little boxes will try to go in this direction. Ah, you can see my, uh, my grabber, though, going to work over here. Sending the goop over this way. Does a lot of damage, and if we're lucky with our aiming, you can hold M to fine-tune. I will aim it right over here. This little thing is where a lot of the red particles come out of. And we can we can destroy that, and some, on some maps you can actually take them over, which is quite interesting. I'm going to pull back with the lathe here. Just wait for the disruptor to show up. Um, we may want to go in and give us a little bit more power. The full Wolf is a missile cruiser, which is quite handy. I'm going to start constructing it. All right, and then I'm going to grab these ships and move them forward once more. Let's see if we can't do a slightly better job of this. Uh, this lathe I'm going to move forward. Because lathes are quite good for clearing this stuff out quite quickly. There's our discharger, which does have some weapons. The outside range is the discharge. The inside range is the lasers you can see it can use to defend itself from the incoming particles. But yeah, only the lathes will clear that. The other thing the lathes will do is they will go and destroy the enemy energy mines and convert them over as well. So if I go and move this destroyer and then scooch forward with my HQ, make sure this is within range. There we go. We'll get that flipped over, and that's going to be fantastic. Then I'm going to take this lathe and just make sure it's over here so we can clear this area so that we can move over our Omnis in a minute, and that's going to be really, really helpful. Uh, I'm going to move a lathe and actually my HQ over here to disable this particle emitter. And if we're very lucky, it'll actually convert rather than become disabled. I think that's a map setting. I'm not sure. Some maps, they just go away. Some maps, you gain control over them. We'll see which one this is. Did unlock a new amp gem. 
So we're gonna go and do what? This makes it so that the mines themselves have dischargers built in, which means that anyone within radius of the mine would actually be protected from the sun effects, which might be pretty good. There's emitter control, which is quite fun. So right now, uh, we need to use the grabbers to send the emitters, but with the emitter control, we will be able to just point stuff from out of them ourselves. This is a little bit dangerous, this particle output. I'm going to try to pull back with my HQ. If your HQ gets destroyed, it's gone for X amount of time, at which point basically everything is shut down. And that's very bad. Very, very bad. Oh, the wolf is done. It's long-range missiles. That's all it's got. It's got a couple of short-range lasers, but it's got really long-range missiles, and it's good for doing long-range bombardment of things. I mean, it doesn't convert things over, but it does a hell of a lot of damage. It's really good for sniping all these little emergents as well. Okay, so that's the end of that little pod. They do tend to focus on anything that is uh, converting over your stuff. Okay, I've lost my layers. Let's go and rebuild them over here. I really do get a, need to get up to critical, um, just critical strength. There we go. Get that converted over. Come on, you can do it. And then back home. Yeah, we're, no, we're using all of our stored stuff. Okay, so we did just destroy that. Oh, there goes my uh, my capital ship, like I was saying. Um, and now you can see nothing is producing any energy. My ships will continue to operate. I can still move them around, but without fresh sources of energy, they will not operate for very long. You can see my countdown here on my capital ship. So again, I'm playing, eh, but, you know, we're showing off some stuff. Big output of particles again. Very unpleasant. I'm going to set my rally point to somewhere over here for my emergent just to try to fight back a little bit and I can put down my corporate HQ again so we'll do that and everything starts to operate once more all right good so let's try to get up to critical mass with our military I will go and like over -cue my production but that's okay it'll just make sure I don't forget to do stuff let's get that going on this is starting to clear up so I'm going to grab these guys and go there once a piece of rock is fully saturated with your with your own mire you really uh, you really can just move out and it's fine um, we're going to try to, I got to provide some cover over here first and move the missiles as far forward. Since I do have the tanker, I could move out of range, but it is more efficient if your, um, your energy mine can just, you know, supply your ships directly. Just more efficient in terms of like sort of time and effort. There you go. So we're going to lathe these things. I don't even remember what they are. I think I think they uh, they provide enemy mire. I'm not sure. There is a, a help you can go to to get the explanation of what the different structures are. I'm not trying to select you. I want the mine. And if we can get that other generator out, that would be good. So because I have that one tech, I can actually steer the output of these things. But... I also have my grabber ship, so I don't need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tech out of the emitter control, release that. I'm going to um, get more energy out of, say, my mines and maybe my land production. We'll get a lot more energy because we're really dumping a lot of it. We can probably clear it out later. Let's get another micro tank. Let's get another grabber because we're going to need that later on to be able to thread this. This is coming along very nicely. Actually, it's nearly done. We're going to go ahead and move them forward into here, and we'll join the main fleet coming that way. Wow, that is a big cloud of stuff. I'm going to move my missile carrier a little further back because it can't really defend itself too well. Uh, I need some more Omnis to replace the ones that have gone away. Uh, I'm going to keep these here just to defend this side. I think this guy can probably move forward in a second. So you can see some of these Omnis got destroyed, or one of them got destroyed because I landed it in the mire, and they weren't able to clear the enemy mire uh, quickly enough. Um, your mire counters theirs, but if we weren't able to clear it quickly enough, then we will uh, we will probably lose some. So this is going to be quite tricky. I'm going to clear this island here to get a base, and actually, yeah, if we can keep missling this group here, that will be quite handy. I'm just going to move forward with one of my carriers. This is our discharge. I'm going to move forward with my destroyer, just get in range of this stuff and try to trim it down a wee bit. And we've got some more offensive ships over here, so let's go and move forward. Um, this is just a lathe, right? Oh, no, no. Oh, this is one of my, um, my grabbers. There we go. Pop that so the rest of the island will go momentarily. I'm going to grab these two and move them down here as well. There we go. We've aggroed the cloud a little bit. You can see our particles are coming in here, though, and doing a good job of countering some of this stuff. We might lose this lathe, but that's okay. You can see it actually, like, 
it, it's um, sort of procedural, right? Where it gets eaten apart, but then as the energy comes in, it repairs itself, which is very cool. So I'm going to go and move my lathe and my capital ship in range here. And actually, this guy's fully healed up. So we're going to move him over here, get rid of this particle in there. Uh, um, emitter and really just keep moving forward over here. Um, these guns I think are just disabled. They're blue so they still belong to me but they're disabled because of Meyer. Um, on some maps the guns actually can be taken over by someone else. Um, so I think what I can do here is move all my lathes and my capital ship over there. I will want to provide with a little bit of cover so we're just gonna move in like that. That's gonna be fine. These guys are just gonna move up over here. Make sure to keep this area clear of uh, emergent and that's going to be fine. My capital ship is taking a little bit of damage, but there's not much threat over here. So we're going to be able to grab another energy cannon, which is going to be okay. Excellent. And then what I'm going to do is grab uh, three of these and just drop them over there. And I tend to want to drop them in groups because they will all produce the mire and that's helpful. Notice that we have our own defensive struct on these things, which is quite good. So now I'm going to grab my other uh, grabber and I'm just going to send a stream of particles that way. So it's going to go and redirect this stuff. And I think that's going to be quite handy for us. Uh, the other thing we haven't talked about is the hammer ship. Hammer ship is just a design that basically has no guns. It does have a little bit, but it's meant for ramming. I can actually like ram through these, the struct, right? And we do damage to each other. So most of my ships will obliterate themselves. But the hammer is just, I guess I can build one, is basically just a giant pile of ship hull with no real system. It's got a couple of particle things uh, that it can use for a variety of stuff, but mostly it's just there to literally ram its way through stuff uh, as a result of being relatively cheap. So that's being produced, which is great. Very good. Oh, no, we didn't actually finish. Let me see that or the Meyer, um, the enemy Meyer one. So let's go and produce another couple. This is 100% full and it's got nothing to shoot anymore. And we did have one survivor, so that's going to be good. So I'm going to send it a buddy. We'll start miring it down here which again cuts back on the enemy emergent, gives me more emergent, which I can set a rally point. I'm going to encourage it to rally over here. That was a stun ball coming over here, but our discharge ship was able to defeat it, which is great. Um, we don't actually have a, um, a carrier over there. Excellent. That got blown up. So if we move a lathe over there, we'll be able to convert that. Although we can't convert it while it's got the mire. See these guns, the mire has been cleared probably by the particulate systems. So they are now shooting on our behalf, which is nice. I'm going to go and drop two more Omnis over there. And I guess build a new one here. I'm going to keep this one here for a good long time. You can see the emergent occasionally comes over and whacks one of these guys, uh, which can lead to some persistent damage. I'm going to move forward with some vessels here. The emergent can still do a lot of damage, but I think we're going to be okay. Missile ship can move forward. This is the minion carrier over here. You can see we can turn on uh, a lot of the devices. I can turn the lasers on and off, for example. So there you go. There's a good way to find out what our weapons are. Uh, lathe, lasers, cannons, and whether it can build or not. So you can manage some of your energy that way as well, which is important for some of the more complex maps. And people, um, some people really do record-breaking runs in this game. Uh, for every one of these maps, there is a high scores list, and you can submit your own um, times, and it's amazing how quickly some people clear this. Oh, I am moving the grabber over here, which is not what I meant to do. Um, I'm not sure that we really need to be shuffling anything with our grabbers anymore. I guess I'll keep sending it this way, but um, we've done everything on this side. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so this is the um, <laughs> this is the ramming ship. What's it, what do they call it? The hammer. So it's all just hull. It's got a three little particle beams, which uh, can be used to build struct, I believe. Or no, it's particle clouds, of which we don't really have any to show off here. I'm going to go ahead and send it on a suicide run over here. So you can see it can pass through all this material. Passing through the rock is harmless. Passing through the enemy struct does hurt, but otherwise isn't really a big deal. I'm going to grab these two uh, and move them over to here. We'll gain some more control over this, get some less enemy struct as well. You can see we've got some struct missing over there, so if I wanted to, I could send the hammer over that way, take care of that. And all this is doing now is adding more goop over here. So this is not really helping us anymore, um, but it's not really costing us anything either. Do these have their own reactors? I don't think so. I'm not surprised, they, ne they basically seem like they never need any power. I think the grabber might work passively is the problem, is the thing. So unless it needs to repair itself, or if it fires its lasers, then it really never needs any energy. Alright, so what we're going to do at this point, we're going to grab the fleet, and as on mass, I'm going to get it sent over to the other side over here. It's a bit risky, we'll probably take some damage, we might even lose some stuff, but we'll probably be okay. I'm going to move these guns up over to there, which is fine. We're going on Omnis, yes we are. I mean, I could have this goop go over here to help clear that out a little bit better, but we're going to be fine. I'm going to move you over there, and that's going to be good. So we're pushing back the enemy struct over here. 
And I'm going to move fo a little bit forward with one of my more aggressive ships. And I'm going to move a lathe forward right into here. Just sneak it in. The lathe can help clear this. Just trying to get close enough to the submitter to convert it with something. And your your master ship is tougher than your lathe ship, so it's there's a lot of incentive to move it forward. But if you lose it, it's a huge pain in the butt. So I'm just going to go and get both lathes. They can work twice as fast to do it. Uh, I'm going to move, make sure to move forward with my tankers here just to try to provide um, plenty of recharge power over here. Because the lathe, oh, you can see well, we lost one of the lathes right away, which is unfortunate. Maybe move the destroyer up over here. Uh, this... This, uh, these clouds can be a bit of an issue. The hammer, which has been destroyed, I'm going to go and bring it in there. It can help convert the clouds from the red to my color, which actually will slow down the emitters. And yeah, we actually are losing a considerable amount of stuff over here. So we're going to have to rebuild a fair bit. And then see. Did I, have I done everything I need to do back here? Basically, I think what I can do is I'm going to move all of my Omnis up front, just in case they can provide a little bit more cover. Uh, we've got a, a stun cannon coming over here, but that's not actually going to cause a problem. And, yeah, I think the hammer would actually help clear that a fair bit. Pull you back. Hmm, how am I going to deal with this? I could, and you know what, let's do that. Let's run a little ninja mission over here. Let's grab you guys and run you down here. Now, there's no carrier in this group, so I'm going to grab the big carrier and send you down over here to assist. And I'm just going to pull back with these guys, bring them actually within the energy border. There is still a... Um, um, sorry, I said carrier, I meant tanker. There's still a mini tanker over here, but it's just better if we're within the radius itself. Uh, the other thing I can do is make sure to set an emergent rally point to there. So all of our emergent will move forward on mass. And a good idea is to get it to rally somewhere that's safe at first to build up the numbers, and then just send it forward like that. So that will make a pretty big difference. But... What I'm looking to do here is eliminate this stunner. If I can get in close enough, I guess I don't have a, um, I don't have an amp module on here, so my range is a little bit lower. But we are going to be able to get it there, which is good. And then once that's clear, what I'm going to do, so I guess I can start moving it there. I don't know if it's mired or not, but it's not, there's no mire generator, so most likely our Omni is going to be able to kick that over just fine. And yeah, we did push back the boundaries there with our struct, although the struct is mostly gone now. So I'm just going to move forward with more things, just to give our lathe a little bit more cover. And see if we can't get a conversion down. Nope. Nope, indeed. Okay, pull back. Alright, that's all good. I'm going to take these ships, move them back into friendly territory, rebuild the lathe. And one of these isn't moving, that's our missile carrier. Again, I'll just try to make sure to have full coverage over there. And you're going to go here. Actually, you're... The tankers being within... Um, um, your energy zone is really handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a battering ram here. It's also going to soak a lot of the particulates that are around. There's another base over there, but I don't think we really have to do much for it. Um, my capital ship. Do something like that. There we go. So that's tanking a fair bit. Move you in. Move you in. Just try to get this flipped over here. So we're going to get three lathes within range. And hopefully we can tank enough of the damage here. We've got plenty of missiles coming in. The lathes are going to get destroyed pretty quick. There we go. Got it. So I'm going to pull back to my capital so that it doesn't get destroyed. Well, you warp to safety. You don't get destroyed here in the campaign. But you warp to safety. There we go. That's much better. And I'm going to set the emergent rally. Actually, I think if I set the emergent rally over here... No. This is, this is better. Um, but it might be worth doing a quick little conversion here. So I'm going to do that along with the micro tanker, and it doesn't need anything else to get the job done. In fact, it doesn't. I think I could just drop the omnis here. That would be sufficient, because the omnis do have guns equipped, so it would eventually destroy it. Okay, I'm going to make sure to bring everything in. Make sure everything is nice, happy, and charged. We've got everything but the hammer. Suppose I can just build the hammer just to get some extra body. There's a lot more ships to unlock, and you can design your own ships. And even when you're campaign play, you get to choose if you use the built-in ship designs or your own ship designs. So there we go. We'll get rid of the stunner. Now I don't even need to worry about dischargers, but there's still an extra body to soak some damage, so what the hell, right? Um, and, all right, let's go and move forward. Let's get you rotated so you look kind of cool. Although this is going to put... Here, I'm going to do this. It's putting the micro tank at the front. Or no, it's not. Yes, it is. Putting the micro tank at the front. So I'm just going to make sure the micro tank stays a little further back. 
Now, uh, the Joven moves really fast, which is cool, but led to a suicide there, so a bit of an oops. And we lost the destroyer as well, so those are being rebuilt over here. We're gonna lose a cruiser, but you know, some losses are fine. Uh, although, oops, it's going for the headquarters now, which I don't want. So, yeah, we got the emergent moving forward, get the headquarters back in here. Just try to cut down some of these numbers. And, yeah, you can see my, uh, my hammer getting destroyed. So now let's just go ahead and move forward with the lathes and my headquarters. And that was my hammer getting destroyed, but it soaked a lot of damage. The other thing, when the ship explodes, it sends particles away. So it's actually a good way to clear a bunch of stuff. There we go. So we won there, but you can see someone, this person has won this scenario in two minutes. It took me 19 minutes, 50 seconds. Now there was a lot of explanation, but yeah, um, it still did take me that long. I mean, I could probably with a few tries get it a little bit better. Um, I also don't know if this is the, um, um, if this is with the base ships or if you can use these times with your custom ships, which would be fine, I suppose. Uh, but I think I would like two separate uh, lists. I don't actually know one way or the other if it's, um, if it's with your custom ships or not. So you can see, do, 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 when I launch this, it gives me the option of choosing your own fleet. Oh yeah, and they do have different timers. Hell, on the sandbox fleet, people haven't done quite as well. I'm willing to bet most people play with the default fleet as a balanced sort of experience there. But if we take a look at the ship editor, do do do, right over here. All right, so uh, create a new ship. Oh, I need a name. So what kind of ship might be we be interested in? Let's say, let's say we wanted a like something very similar to the HQ ship, something that could generate its own power um and sort of go out and do stuff but something that was a bit more disposable i wonder if you could do a double lathe ship so do a lathe the idea is this is a ship that just runs out and tries to capture something really really fast so we're going to edit the hull when you're going to need some more space over here so uh, because the lathes are quite big if i recall so we're going to need something maybe this wide you can see the cost goes up Did something like this. Let's make sure we can actually fit two lathes in there. And yeah, we can. So we want to probably pull it back closer into the middle of the ship. Um, I don't think we're symmetrical, are we? Because mm -hmm. that should go there. And then this should go somewhere like this. Excellent. You've got uh, diagonal pieces as well. Boom, boom. So you can make your ship look all cool. Uh, we're still not... Um, Oh no, these bits, oh, I see what the problem is. My hull was symmetrical. It's that the components weren't. There we go. That's why it wasn't making sense. All right. This is not good if you're, uh, if you've got a somewhat, a little bit amount of OCD. There we go. And then trim that like that. Excellent. Okay, so something like this. We'll also need some room in the back for some engines. I think we need about that much space. I'm not sure. So this would be a single engine. Um, would we want more speed for something like this? It is supposed to be like the ninja double lathe kind of design. This is probably going to be a ridiculously expensive ship. But hey, that's fun. Uh, engine is what I want. Do, do, do. Like this and like this. So then we get some amount of symmetry going on. So then the question is, if it's going to be operating outside of energy range... How does it support itself in that situation? Do we give it a reactor? Or do we just give it big energy tanks? So we'll save up a bunch of energy and then go. And then where do you put it? I think what I'm going to do is I think it will need reactor. It might it might get a pair, like reactor energy tank. Well, I guess if you got reactors, you don't need that. I don't know how much energy is being generated. I'm going to assume we want two reactors because our other ship's got that. So let's assume we want two, like this and like this. So this is its main job. After that, it needs just a little bit of defense, probably short range defense, which is what the lasers are. So I'm thinking something like, now you can do directionality. I'm gonna assume we're gonna be facing the threat. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put a trio of lasers on the front over here. So this is the dual lathe ship over here, which um, 
It's got a name. But I already named it. I don't know. Dual Leif. So if we apply this, there you go. This is our ship design over here. Looks cool. So if we do that, and I return to the main menu. I haven't actually tried this before. I'm curious to see. So we go here, and we launch, and then we go sandbox ship. Choose your own fleet. Launch mission. Oh, oh. So you get the default one. These are the ones I've unlocked at this point in the mission. And then there we go. Uh, no, sorry, not. Oh, these are the built-in ones. Um, stock. Oh, I see. I can change what ships are available to me in this mission from the stock ones, including the C-Class, which is huge, or the carrier over here, which looks very cool. Um, the Varro. Yeah. Custom. There we go. Dual lathe. And then I say, add this to the mission inventory. There it is. So it's now available. So we could launch. Um, oh. Oh. Apparently I had the, a different mission selected, but that's okay. And so I would, I still have to start with the corporate HQ. So let's say I do this, unpause. You can set the speed as well. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do that. Get that energized, get one of these energy modules. So the dual lathe over here is extremely expensive. Let's go over here so we can get another energy module. We've got tech unlocked. So we're gonna say mine production. Um, Omni reactors, so we can spread things out a little bit more. Give the Omnis their own cannons. And um, you know what? The mines will have cannons as well, so they can self-defense. That sounds like a good idea. So this is going to take a while to build, and actually, it's in a dangerous place. Now that the central module is built, we can actually, this can move. It's got a certain amount of battery capacity in the central module as well. And this is the sort of thing I think that would benefit very much from a, from a big wiki or something like that. Mm -hmm. So... That's still being assembled. I'm gonna go and get, oh, we're gonna hook up this energy mine over here. There's another amp gem. So let's increase the build slash move speed. Although if we ha don't have enough energy, well, we have energy stored, actually. It will be very handy. And you can see the particles are going a lot faster now. So we're gonna burn through our energy store a lot faster. I like that, handy. There we go, and there's our ship. It's almost done, the lathes aren't there. There you go, and the reactors are still being built. You can see that's like one module at a time. But if I move over here, we can get the lathes operational. Our lasers are in place. So they're going to help shoot things down. Lasers are very short range, which is a good defensive um, option. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our ship go and do a ninja run over to here with its dual engines. It's going to cover. Uh, it's going to have two lathes overlapping. You can see it goes really, really, really fast compared to some of the other vessels, which is very satisfying. That's been built. Um, we need an Omni there and probably a couple Omnis over here, actually. Omnis have cannons. I've got, I've got that enabled in my tech. Plus, they will goop this up, and they've got the lathe built in, so they're going to hook up whatever that ship design is. Okay, this is all done, which is good. Um, what I'll probably do is move my parent ship over here to help defend the area and actually be ready to lathe that emitter over there. And then bring in a couple of ships over here. I mean, we don't have much in the way of energy, but we've got some stored. So you're going to go over here. You're going to dual lathe this and go really fast. I think I like this idea. I'm going to go here. Uh, Wolf class ship was... Oh, we unlocked the Marauder on this mission. Excellent. And yeah, it's going to go and take care of that. Well, this is very fun. Yeah, it's like having two HQs. But this one's more disposable. In fact, what I would really like if I could tune the HQ ship, um, you know, maybe like... Well, the, you don't pay for it, I guess. Never mind. I was going to say, I'll oh, make it really cheap and small and, and, and slow, and then I can leave it at home. But you don't pay for it, so I guess if you could change it, you'd actually just make it, like, super OP. There we go. Info cache. You get some background story. You're operating over there. I mean, yeah. You're basically like a lathe ship, but better. The other thing it's kind of interesting is... You can actually, you're limited by your, your blueprints over here for your ship. So even if you were just running the normal missions, unlocking more of a particular design could be very helpful. I don't think we need more lathes, actually. But, I mean, once it's built, it's built. One of the things that would be interesting, actually, because the tankers operate, they don't actually have their own reactors. They always go home and get the energy from, you know, some bit somewhere else. But you could change that up. I wonder if I can grab this, like, super fast. I don't know how well defended this thing is. With its dual lathe and the reactors. Would it be able to flip this before it dies? Well, it's doing a pretty good job, actually. Also, with its reactors, it can self-heal. Up until the moment it loses the reactor. That's actually quite nice. 
I believe, yeah, I believe it can self-heal with its own reactors. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, coming along over here, which is good. In fact, my dual life is doing a better job of clearing the map than my headquarters ship. So this might be, like, a valid strategy for a rush. So we got another energy source over there. We'll have to go through a lot of stuff. I'm going to wait for the regular lace to finish and then move them all in together. So I'll move the destroyer over there to cover this. The cruiser right over here. Again, just to cover this area to help clear it out a little bit. And once it's thinned out, we will move forward with our headquarters. Do that. So you can see it's got twin reactors, twin engines. The big difference is it's got two cannons as opposed to a second lathe. Otherwise, it's very similar to mine. All right, so we're going to go and move you forward and try to get some overlapping bits on that. And actually, if I amp you, you'll even get more range, which is kind of handy to make sure that we can bring more lathes to bear on this energy source. And then build me an Omni over there. Oh, I think it's in some goop. What about up there? There we go. You can do that. Excellent. Well, there you go. So this is a quick look at at, um, at Particle Fleet, the latest game from Knucklecracker. Again, if you've never played um, Creeper World, it's very good. In fact, for whatever reason, I think I might enjoy Creeper World more. Do I? I don't know. It's very hard to say. I like the sort of more methodical base building aspect of Creeper World. Very, very appealing to me. But I think Particle Fleet is probably actually a better game. It's one of those weird things. I might personally be drawn more to Creeper World, but I think Particle Fleet is a better game, and it certainly has a hell of a lot of replay value. One of the things I am going to be excited to try, and yes, I realize the user interface is horrible. It's horrible. This is, this is something I suspect is made by a single person. Um, they got credits over here. I'm expecting there's not a dedicated artist, but I might be wrong. Um, mm-hmm, uh-huh. All right, a couple of helpers. Oh, oh, chip module art. Well, that's true, actually. You needed that. Misc art. Well, I mean, there's some there's some things going on, I gotta say. But the user interface, well, it's very functional. It's very functional. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.